Out comes Dina, but didn't look like that. Winton In a year of change, it seemed fitting that Melbourne, the power side of the 50s, would break its long premiership drought. In the pre-season National Panasonic Cup, the Demons were pitted against Essendon. The game was a beauty, with neither side giving an inch. Now Danaher, and handling it well, as Doug said. He's the man who's treating it as though it's a dry day, and Izard, the runner, puts the Bombers into attack. Francis, now Van der Haar, open goal. Put down your glasses. Nice spoil. Here comes Teddy Fitz. Out to Sparks. Went too long. Another chance for Sparks. A long hand pass is absolutely brilliant. On it goes to Dean. Dean hooks it back and puts it through. And that was just keep pushing it forward. Ball knocked away from him. Goes long towards Salmon who comes from the back. Oh, good mark. And a chip over the top to Williams. Open goal. The Bombers are in front by a point. Wilson out wide to Giles. He's got a good run. Danaher tackles him. Giles to the ground. Back it comes. A left foot snapped. Bailey. And it's through. Just as they'd done against Collingwood in the daylight back in 1964, Melbourne won their flag by just four points. The Demons for the first time in 16 years. Very clever hand pass. Only 14,000 saw Brisbane take its first steps into the big time on March the 27th, under the Melbourne cricket ground lights. No one expected them to trouble North Melbourne, but how wrong we all were. Now Schimmelbush, the veteran, on the 50 metre line, a flyer, a beauty, a goal! In a poor standard match, Peter Knight's Bears were a closely knit combination. Their historic 33 point win made them the first team without the traditional Victorian roots to take four points in a Premiership encounter. Ironmonger favoured here for the Swans. As South Melbourne and then Sydney, the Swans had known heartfelt misery on many a trip to Victoria Park. In round one of 1987, they opened a new chapter. Kappa steadies, no one within 10 metres, Kappa goals. Thanks to the brilliance of Warwick Kappa up forward, Sydney led by 12 goals at half time. Jared Healy, Greg Williams and Barry Mitchell cut the Magpies to ribbons. Williams has three men to handball, it's a glorious handball from centre half forward, the shot from Roberts. A goal. The and final the score of 25 15 165 and the winning margin of 91 points were records for the Swans. The first of many in a memorable season. Can he fly? He goes through his fingers. Give it a minute, goes kick one goal. The loose man is carrying. He's a great player. In the grand final replay, Hawthorne showed that little had changed over the summer months. Nine goals ahead at three quarter time. The Hawks simply outclassed Carlton. Dunstall! What a great mark! Dunstall kicked six, Platten four in a 45 point victory that almost mirrored the result of the Premiership playoff. For what is a very partisan home crowd. 37,000 squeezed into Subiaco on Sunday, March the 29th to see the new look from the West against Richmond. The West Coast Eagles were the talk of the town. In Ron Alexander, they had a tough coach. In Ross Glendinning, a leader with Premiership experience in the East. No, it's a goal. Further afield is grabbed by Lee. Here's a chance for Rioli. He straightens up into the open goal. Morris Rioli, a beautiful kick. Rioli goes over the top. Chance now for James. James gets the hand pass back to support Mitchell. He's storming into goal. Mitchell, he puts it through from point blank range. At three-quarter time, however, Richmond had run them ragged. The Tigers, who'd finished 10th of 12 in 86, led by four goals. Deep in the right full forward pocket, Egan, he pulls it back. That is a magnificent attempt. He's put it through for a goal for Richmond. The final term was a corker. The Eagles kicked 9-4 to 1-5 and romped home by 14 points. Wally Matera, the star, with four goals. goes to goal and puts it through. And the place is alive. There's the boundary throw in, Ashenko from behind slaps it, Goldwood, McNish leads in the race, brilliantly done to Bennett, can't find the handle, socket off the ground by Redstick, Markle, Markle puts it through and that could be the sealer, that's his second goal.
tremendous struggle against North. Schimmelbush, left foot snap, is a beauty. In his ninth season as captain and 297th game with North Melbourne, Wayne Schimmelbush showed he'd lost none of that class. Against Melbourne under lights, he was stunning. The ruse by 33 points. A magnificent left foot goal. Up goes Yates, off his hands, picked up nicely by Law. Law to cracker, cracker goals. John Law, well done. Turner butters up. There have been many great clashes between Carlton and Collingwood. At Waverley in round two of 87, we saw a titanic struggle. Turner does put it through. Stasevich was superb up forward for Collingwood in the second half, and in a day when the straight shooters were on target, Collingwood kicked 17 goals from 22 scoring shots. Breaks away, looks for Taylor. Taylor from behind takes the mark. It wasn't enough. Despite Collingwood's seven-goal final quarter, the Blues won their first match of the season by seven points. Silvani will run in, gets a hand pass across, and the goal to Aitken will take the pressure off the Blues. Eagles running down the ground. The lead changed 14 times when Essendon and the West Coast met at Windy Hill. It would be one of the finest matches of the season, a game when outstanding individual performances were the norm. Oh, great hands, Paul Salmon. Halfback, Vanderhaar, one hand. And when a kick seemed to separate the teams all day. He's out of chance now. A dynamic trio, it's a goal. And as quick as a win. For Essendon, none did better than Terry Danaher, who took 14 telling marks. For the home crowd, a five-point win would leave them undefeated. Into the forward line. When Denning puts it back towards their half-back uh, position. Balls on the ground. Chance for Clark. Goal! Reynoldson doing well early off the hands of Burke. They roved well by the Bears. Jimmy Edmond kicked eight goals the day Brisbane visited Cardinia Park. And Mark Williams kicked six. Amazingly, the Brisbane Bears won their second straight game with an emphatic win over Geelong. Oh, fortunately... Balls in the hands of Phillips. In goes Capra, beautiful hand buzzer, thrown out by Mitchell. To Bolton, Bolton straightens up into the open goal. Bang, and it didn't take them long, this one. On Sunday, Sydney maintained its top position on the league ladder, thumping Footscray by 108 points. For the second week in a row, the Swans had set a new record, winning margin. Meters out, he fires, and what's the result? It's a goal. What magnificent team play. A chance for Henwood, a hurry kick. Further afield towards Bolton. Oh, here's a chance for Healy. That was brilliantly picked up. If that's a goal, that is top play. Easily gets around Petraglia from 55 metres out. He looks for Kappa. And Kappa way up over the top. Takes the mark. As it's taken by Williams. That the architects, undoubtedly Williams, Healy, Murphy, Browning and Murphy, Murphy who all accumulated more than 30 possessions. Two young players, there's Potter getting it out to Basie. Oh, he does it easily, Mark Basie. Is this his fifth goal? Yes, what a goal. And the Swans march on. For the first time, a Premiership match was played under lights at VFL Park and Fitzroy revelled in the conditions. North had no answer to the dominance of Ruse, who had 20 kicks, 13 marks Four and 13 kicks. hand passes. One spot. Stephen's about centre wing position. Out it goes to Ruse, who's working towards his 30 possessions. In front, not a good effort by Scott. Leon Harris looks to give a hand pass. Cross it goes to Pekin. This might be a goal, I think. Brisbane's run ended at Moorabbin, where Darrell Baldock celebrated his first success as coach of St Kilda. Owen kicked five for the Saints, but the stars were McConville and Elphingston. Good shepherding, the Saints go into the pocket. And the mark taken by the big fellow in Lockett. Plays on. Goal! This is Builder. Good mark. Owen on the win, Maru's fumbles it. Owen tidies up. Shot at goal by Owen. What about that one? A goal! Bradley. For the second week in a row, Carlton put together a 10-goal term, this time against Footscray, and the Blues, inspired by Stephen Silvani, went on to win by 87 points. Oh, swings it back beautifully for Kernahan. Couldn't get the boot to it, but Murphy goals. Here's Dennis, breaks clear. Kick over the top into the square. Silvani at the back, it might go through. 
It's over the pack, and another goal to the Blues, kicked by Dennis. Henwood up from behind. At Subiaco on Sunday, a huge television audience and 38,000 locals watched Sydney maintain their unbeaten run. A six-goal final term saw them overtake the Eagles before going on to a 27-point win. Formerly of South Fremantle, then across to Glenelg, now in Sydney. Oh! Across to Carroll on the burst. He goes long now towards full forward. They've got the numbers two on one down there. They fly against each other three on one. Right arrives and kicks a goal from five metres out. In game number 300, Wayne Schimmelbush produced yet another blistering performance. This time outpointing Geelong superstar Gary Ablett. For the Roos, the Cracker brothers were untouchable, kicking seven goals between them. At the Siren, North by nine points. Bounce, 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 pack and knocks it through. Almost a turn. Outmaneuvered by Holt. Good play, Holt. Mark Dwyer. Well, David Dwyer, rather. What a kick. Goal! Carlton set up its victory over the West Coast Eagles when its two major forwards, Kernahan and Johnston, each kicked four goals in the first quarter. And he's online again. Murphy, too slow, caught by Main Waring. The kick off the ground from Johnston's good football. Another one from Gleeson. Front position. O'Connell, but look at all the blues. Johnston's third. At half forward, leading in the race for the ball. In chips. The Eagles defence, it's tapped on by to Johnston. Johnston goes goalwards, he's put another one on the board. Now Murphy. The Dominator would finish with seven. Kernahan with six, and Carlton would win by 87 points. Silvani! High fly, here's Johnston, a goal. No, it doesn't. It bounces to Satori. In for Kernahan and here's John O getting it. Into the goal spoon, bang over the grandstand. Got in the front position, Micken gets a tap away. Barwick, lovely snap. Two goals to Doug Bowick. On the Easter Sunday, Brisbane too would feel the brunt of two potent forwards when it fell to Fitzroy in its first outing in front of its home crowd at Carrara on the Gold Coast. 22,000 saw Osborne and Barwick each kick seven as the Lions recorded a 15-point win. Goal number seven to Doug Bowick. Colin puts a high ball down. Richard Osborne takes the mark. Seven goals it is to Richard Osborne. Pumped away from Hawker, Baker is... At Windy Hill the next day, Sydney lost its first match of the season, with Brownlow medalist Greg Williams reported for striking Essendon's Leon Baker, and well held into the bargain. The Swans looked second rate. They lost by eight goals. Back in front. Way's allowed to go on. Clark lines up, gets through two, still gets through, kicks the goal, goals! Very acute angle on the boundary line. Boot Despite its three key forwards, Lockett, Winmar and Owen kicking 13 goals between them, St Kilda could not match the all-round strength of North Melbourne under the MCG lights. Well pressured by Frawley. Arsiri, now Larkin. North back in front. Jim Cracker boosts him at attack with a prodigious one. 65 metres downfield. An awkward bounce favours McDonald. Open goal out to our series. Bang, through it goes. Long kick towards the front of the square. High flyers want it. Silvani! The next day, in a game worthy of a 50,000 plus crowd on the Anzac Day holiday, Carlton moved to the top of the ladder with a nine goal win over Essendon. Murphy runs in towards 4 4. Over the top to Kernahan and the Blues. Fifth goal on the board. The star for the Blues was undoubtedly Kernahan. He had 15 kicks, 14 of them produced a score. His eight goal six haul was outstanding. On to Kennedy. Kennedy drives long. Kernahan's in front. Kernahan's got it. The Blues had winners everywhere, from the tempestuous David Rhys Jones, who was reported twice but found guilty on neither charge, to young Peter Motley, the experienced runner Paul Meldrum, and key defender John Dorotich. Flies in. No mark taken. Evans, a chance for Bernie Evans. Snapshot for goal from 35 metres. Is a goal. If Blues fans had been looking for a clue about their side's prowess in 87, this was the game. Dean. Alvin now. The backs are going to have some bombs at goal in the last few minutes. Tom Alvin, no mistake.
Brennan for the Eagles, number 14. Hawthorne led by 25 points after 10 minutes in their match against the West Coast Eagles at Prince's Park. The reigning Premiers looked superb. By half time, they trailed as the Eagles came back. A good hand back to Renstead, 30 metres out. Good spoil there by Langford. He charges after to put it out, I'm sure. In a two goal win to the West Australians, they produced 13 goal kickers, which in itself showed their remarkable versatility in attack. It's Holmes, and the Eagles have got a goal and they're going to win this game. David Bolton, the hand pass further afield. Richmond coach Tony Jewell watched in horror as his side squandered an eight goal third quarter lead against Sydney. In an amazing final term, Kappa kicked four and the Swans won by 20 points. Puts it forward. Kappa on the half volley, hand pass back to Bayes. This time it's a goal as Bayes puts it through. This quarter, here they come again, the Swans, as we see Potter with a long kick down to Morwood. Morwood doesn't get the bounce. Great play by Kappa as he punches it to Morwood. He's got an open goal. Morwood kicks. Kappa ducks back. Oh, he's marked it. What a mark. Good side, too, when they get that ball running. Look at this for beautiful football to Richardson. Injuries to Melbourne stars Peter Moore, Todd Viney and Chris Connolly slowed the Demons at Carrara and allowed Brisbane to snatch its third win of the season by a kick. He's put it through and it's made a difference having him down there. Picks the ball up and oh. across the ground. It's a shocking kick taken by Beckett onto the chest of Banfield. One bounce, he's steady, goes towards the open goal and the Bears in front by six points. Carroll takes the free kick, drives it long down towards the forward area. No mark taken. Kappa comes across the back. It's left. It's picked up by Potter. A snap towards goal. Lovely kick from Potter. Those who dreamt of a national competition in years past were rewarded with one of the amazing sights in football on May the 1st. A packed house of some 33,000 saw Sydney play the match of the round against Carlton. It was a game that lived up to all expectations. Stevie Wright comes in, kicks it off the ground, and it's through six goals straight. Hawk swoops on the ball for the Swans. The hand pass out towards his teammate in Potter, who goes with a long kick. It's over the line and through. A big knock away comes to Johnson. He won't give in without a fight. Wayne Johnston. A right foot kick, Rhys Jones is the flyer, here's danger, over the back of the pack is Peter Motley, he straightens up, he slams a goal, and the Blues put it through, so the difference now is two points. When Mitchell found Morewood at the 24 minute mark of the final quarter, the Swans clinched one of their greatest victories. Top spot on the ladder was again the reward. Back with Wiley across to Main Waring. He's running it down towards half forward. Our Syrian pursuit. Main Ironically, the two biggest attendances of the round were interstate. In Perth, the Eagles drew 28,000 and the loyal locals witnessed their side demolish North Melbourne. By Warsfold. North Melbourne. Here come the Eagles. As coming up the centre of the ground is Murray Rinstead. He kicks it wide. He's looking for Wiley. Wiley gets a lovely bounce. He hooks it back. It bounces towards goal. Lewis is there. Up the a Nears 5 helped them to a 74-point win. In the last 40 minutes, the Eagles kicked 12 goals to 2. Lewis is uh, dispossessed. Back it comes to Lamb. Oh, this is danger because Holmes has got it. A hand pass to Renstead, who's got great skills to Wiley. And Wiley from 25 minutes pops it through. A chance for Malaxis to repulse this attack. He hand passes to the runner, Tenotti. For the first time, a night match was played for Premiership points at the Wacker in Perth, and torrential rain didn't stop a sellout crowd of 17,000 urge on the Eagles. With Ross Glendinning outstanding, the Eagles were too talented for Brisbane. The final scoreline saw them victors by 19 points. Clears the players down there and bounces through for a goal. goes on and kicks towards the wing, it's over Bradley's head. Football supporters were shattered to read on Friday morning of serious injuries sustained by Carlton's young star Peter Motley in a car accident. When the Blues met Geelong, they dedicated the game to Motley. Robertson gets it to Bradley, Bradley with pace to burn, two bounces, 35 metres out and goes bang and puts it through for Carlton's fourth goal.
After an even start, the Blues poured on six goals in each of the last three quarters to beat Geelong by 56 points. Dorotich, but it's Naley intercepting. Oh, beautiful ball and turn. Naley shoots for goal from 50 metres out and bangs his fourth goal on the board. The one sour note was the loss of star youngster Stephen Silvani with a knee injury. The biggest crowd of the round, close to 50,000, saw those old rivals Melbourne and Collingwood. Star for the Demons in their eight goal win was Brian Wilson, who dominated with 31 possessions. Up forward, the genius of Robbie Flower was never more evident. He kicked six to shatter the pies. Ball comes out quickly. That's Giles. A little fickle bounce here. Gives Sean White the chance. A nice left footer. He kicked a beauty last week and he's kicked one today. As we see, Greg Deer get the ball down. Williams puts the hand pass out to Bolton. Lovely play by Williams as Bolton floats the ball forward. Tony Moorwood takes possession. The left foot snap towards goal. He's scored it. On Mother's Day, the Sydney Swans gave Hawthorne a reception they wouldn't forget in a hurry. In a match that saw the lead change ten times, the Swans twice came back from perilous positions to steal the game by eight points. Kappa helped the Swans take the lead with his third and Mitchell sewed up the points in the dying seconds. The Swans on top of the ladder with six wins in seven games. It was a position the Swans were destined to lose in round eight. At the SCG under lights, Fitzroy underlined its great improvement with a five goal win. He straightens up the little fella and he puts it through for his second goal. Thornton, Keane and Clayton dominated for the visitors and with Osborn kicking four goals, the Roos were being mentioned as a finals contender again. Gerard Healy, a high floater. Grant Laurie and Kappa. Kappa! of the year. It's grabbed by Kepler. He swings onto the left foot. Can they reply? Osborne, look at this. Shepard, touch was it? No, I don't think so. It's a goal and the Roys reply with a great goal. For the first time in three years, St Kilda won back-to-back -back games. In a one-sided match, the Saints allowed only one goal after quarter time. Fires a goal. What a great goal that was. High ball, centre-half forward. He's a the handball to Barnes, Barnes left foot shot for goal, is online. In the space of six minutes in the third quarter, Essendon kicked five goals to end Collingwood's chances. The mark on his chest, a short pass to the opposite half forward flank, Foles, inside 50 metres, bang goes the big bomb, Barnes in the goal square, an easy goal to the Bombers. One bright light for the Magpies was the determined play of Darren Mullane, who kicked four goals and was clearly his side's best player. Rain cards approaching. That won't help Collingwood to fight back. Soccer up to the forward line. Wide open for Mullane. Hamilton comes at him. Well played, Mullane. He gets his second for the turn. Unsuccessful. Kicked off the ground by Jenke. Back to the half forward flank. Raritan with a rocket hand pass. Finds Curran 50 metres out. Curran's long shot. Spinning back and he's gone. The twin-pronged attack of Brereton and Dunstall was invincible when Hawthorne defeated Geelong. Dunstall kicked seven, while the kid kicked six in a nine-goal win. Dunstall screws the ball around. Is it going to bounce? He's popped it through. Missed it away, Michael Richardson to Mark Williams. There's a, on this occasion Bernie Harris, the former Fitzroy player. A hand pass to the pocket, straight for Wallison. Brisbane shot Richmond down in the opening ten minutes at Carrara with five quick goals. Jeff Raines was magnificent against his old side, as was Reynoldson in defence. If Richmond had one clear winner on an eminently forgettable day, it was Dale Waitman. The flea had 11 kicks, 28 hand passes and kicked four goals, all in a 35-point loss. To cross, Waitman takes it off the hands of Smith into the open goal and Dale Waitman brings up his fourth goal. 
Centering kick for Cracker. North Melbourne came back strongly after losing to Carlton the previous week. Against Richmond on a Friday night at the MCG, the Roos piled on six goals in the second quarter. A wonderful dive by Crocker. That was absolutely magnificent. A little bit of fortune, but he deserved it. Over the back it goes to Stephen McCann. He will give it over towards Mr Love. And Love can't miss that one. While Larkin was clearly best of field, Fairley contributed five goals in a 34-point win that had the ruse just outside the top five on percentage. It's close and through for four points. On he goes to Jim Cracker. Up to half forward, Fairley marks again, plays on and goes bang and kicks it. Now, Hinkley, unselfishly to Barwick. Barwick onto the right foot, kicks quickly, through for a goal. In the match build as the best of the round, Carlton and Fitzroy struggled in the windy conditions at Prince's Park. In a defensive game, the Blues looked to their champion, Kernahan, and got it. With top spot on the ladder at stake, Carlton was successful by three goals. And Madden to Glasgow, a mighty kick by David Glasgow. It's scoring from about 15 metres forward of the centre circle. Two miracle goals to the Blues in the space of 15 seconds. Over the centre, not forward by Meldrum. 41,000 were at Football Park in Adelaide on a Tuesday night in May as the Big V, captained by North's Wayne Schimmelbush, took on the might of South Australia. Baker hits it out wide. It's nicely picked up by Naley again. A left foot snap as a gem. Lindner and Naley were the keys for the Crow Eaters up forward as they attempted to win back to back State of Origin matches against the Vicks. Another goal. McGuinness number seven under the pack. Langford in a hurry. Naley again. Third goal for the quarter. What a beauty. Coached by Graham Corns, the South Australians bounded away to a four-goal lead at three-quarter time, despite a string of changes made by the Victorian coach Billy Goggin. Anderson is a quick player. McGuinness will shoot for goal with a long left footer. And McGuinness will put it through. What a magnificent answering goal again. At the 25-minute mark of the final quarter, the Victorians got to within a kick as Richard Osborne goaled. It was Osborne again who had the opportunity to give his side a shock victory. His snap went astray. The South Australians by four points. Chris Langford won the Witten medal for the Victorians. Chris McDermott the Foz Williams medal for the winners. Horrific kicking by Footscray saw them post one goal ten until early in the second quarter. It would not stop the Bulldogs putting a dent in Fitzroy's finals aspirations. The hand pass comes out to Kennedy from Glascott. After a promising AFL debut, the Brisbane Bears were finding some of life's truths in the big time. Against Carlton in round ten, it would be a 103-point belting. Punched away by Reynoldson. On Tuesday night in Adelaide, Wayne Schimmelbush was captain of Victoria. Less than a week later, his league career was over. In his 306th match, he suffered a severe knee injury. The 34-year-old Schimmer, the league's oldest player, felt his left knee just give way. It's incredible, that. Jimmy Cracker gets them all through. RCE back to Jimmy Cracker. Hand pass over the top to Phil. Phil snaps towards goal. Two goals in a matter of moments to North. Inspired by the loss of one of the club's greats, North responded with a nine-goal third term to turn the game. Love kicked six for the Roos in a nine-point win, described later by coach John Kennedy as courageous. Oh, what a kick! What a goal! What a performance by Jason Love for his fifth goal! Smiley, beautiful hand pass to Brennan. Brennan taps it away. Oh, gee, here's Renstead from 50 metres. Kicks it long. Collingwood's trip to Perth on the Monday was all one-way traffic. The Eagles far too good, with a 57-point win pushing the West Coast into fourth spot. Holmes and Glenn Dinning each kicked four goals. Lewis comes up to take the mark. Main wearing his free on the outer side. He ignores that and uses the ball brilliantly to Glenn Dinning. Banks fell over. Glenn Dinning kicks a goal. Robertson 
comes on. The play at full forward for North Melbourne. A chance for another goal. And Cracker comes through and kicks a very easy goal. At one stage in their match at VFL Park, North led Hawthorne by 44 points. That margin would be turned around and the Hawks would register a 22-point win. He kicks a brilliant goal. Again, it was the Hawks forward line that did so much damage. Dunstall kicked five, as did Curran, while Brereton was restricted to three after kicking 18 goals in the previous three matches. Against the boundary line, gets past McDonald, handball inboard, Kennedy, snapshot for goal by Kennedy, is on line. And... Picks it up, a left foot kick hooked down towards Moorwood, punched away though. Sydney had no trouble disposing of Brisbane, the 73-point margin ensuring the Swans' third position on a congested ladder. Swinging back. It's fit. There's Mark Williams. Oh, Hawk does it easily. Gets away to Bolton. This could be a goal coming up. He runs to the 50-metre line. Hand pass to Bays. Bays to Healy. Healy will sprint into the open goal. Bang and Gerard Healy. They put that through his fourth goal. Uh, pointing at the, the mark. And Geelong very lax to leave Howard on his own for his seventh mark. Drives up towards Taylor and Darcy. No one's touched this. Who's got the legs? The ball or Flanagan? The ball wins. The best match of the round was on the Queen's birthday holiday at VFL Park. In a thriller, Geelong and Collingwood kept more than 30,000 entertained as barely a kick separated the two sides in the second half. Brown, outside 50. Turner against Darcy. Turner! Both sides kicked six goals in the final term, but it was Geelong that came out just five points ahead. Four for the day. And the siren's gone. Geelong will win it anyway. Hit the post. And it hit the post. What a sensational finish. Sean White thumps up the ground, goes to Robertson, lines up from 40, and goes. Biggest crowd of the round? Nearly 50,000 at the MCG for the match between Carlton on top of the ladder and the challenging Melbourne. This day, it was all Carlton. He gives it to Naley, and Naley kicks a goal for the Blues. Straight kicking to the tune of 15-2 from the Blues proved far too much for Melbourne. Wide, Robertson shoots for goal and puts it through. A sad note for the Blues, the loss of David Rees-Jones. Suspended again, this time for four matches after being found guilty of striking both Giles and Flower. It would take his tribunal appearances to 24, 15 as the reported player. North Melbourne continued to impress. A six-goal win over Essendon under lights at the MCG on Friday night gave the Roos a 7-5 record. Hands chance here, Robertson goals! In the direction of Salmon, two against him, in the middle of the pack, comes back to him, but he fumbled, and then toe pokes it off the ground, chance here for Keane if he can pick it up, running out of room, who oh, he did well to beat the diving tackle, back to Salmon who tried to volley it through, Ezard, and Ezard has kicked a goal. And to the ground it comes and Jonas comes in, Jonas loses it, hand pass comes out, intercepted, and picked up and shot for goal, with credit, and here's a chance for Jimmy Cracker, Peter German will goal, doesn't often miss, and Francis kicks it out where Cunningham went early. It's three to one against him, big John Moss up there with it, and a great dodge that time. Brilliant football, Spargo. Spargo steadies and kicks a magnificent long one. The crazy kick, the two crackers up there. It comes back here to Spargo, open goal. That's it. North really drilling it in now. Of a break at the start of the match. Great tap by Browning to Healy. Sydney was firmly entrenched in third place after accommodating Melbourne at the MCG. Despite a slight revival from the Demons in the third quarter, the Swans were rarely extended. Kappa kicked five to take his tally to 58. Gerard Healy, Williams, out wide to Bolton, all tackled fiercely. He rode the butt well. That hurt him. Bolton in the hands of the trainers. Goes 15 metres backwards to Coleman. Kappa. Oh, the umpire paid the mark. About 20 out. Yes, he's got the first touch to it, Bert. Yes, definitely a mark. Towards full forward, no mark. Wilson can't gather. Now he can, he's well tackled. Neagle the tackler in the back. 
he's nearly off too, Brian Wilson. Well, Neagle wouldn't be very happy because it looked to me like a fair tackle. Runs around. Oh, he's missed. He's going to get another kick. Well, I don't believe it. He did run around. Kappa one out with Hughes. Hughes the punch, 25 metres. Straight to Morewood. 40 metres out. Not a bad kick and a great goal to Tony Morewood. Looking for the high flyer. White can't mark. Wilson there. Spalding it was the high flyer. Wilson's hand pass out wide finds Yates. It's a beauty. David Bolton, we won't see him back today. He's in the blazer. Melbourne in attack again. 40 metres out. Robbie Flowers, kick two. Hooks back over his shoulder. Bailey's there. Good mark. What a courage mark. And it should be enough to put the D's in front. Kappa's quick kick into the pocket. Tony Moore backing him up as Mitchell. Newport there. Oh, Mitchell does it well. Keeps his feet on the ground. Comes around and snaps for goal. 15 metres out and puts it through. Morgan having trouble getting it. Glenn with some good play here. A gentle handball to Barish. A kick that Lockyer's lost his footing. And the mark's been plucked there by Darcy. Ooh, and, uh, and a couple of little... Uh, Biffs and clouts from both players. Ruckman Funnigan marks in front of, Lo of Miles and then kicks it straight towards Dean Turner. A little wrestle on here. Good attempt by uh, Gary Cameron. And he's gone. High kick. Cleave against Sashenko. Behind. What a great mark from the Miles. But the Eagles need to attack very quickly here to do Glenn Dinning. He shrugs away from Cleave. Gets it onto his boot. Directs it towards goal. And it's fallen through for them today as we see Morris trying to crash his way through there's young Pritchard a hand pass to Loveridge, Loveridge has a pot shot at the goals and he's put it through a great goal in Queensland the next day the exploits of Jason Dunstall were simply too much for Brisbane to bear the man from Cooparoo kicked 11 in front of his one time home crowd his stats showed 20 kicks 13 marks 11 goals and a handful of opponents. Fellow forward Dermot Brereton was in great form too. He had 21 kicks and took 12 marks, helped himself to five goals as well. The end story was a 95 point win to the Hawks. Morris goes forward and brings up his first goal. A high floating kick down towards the forward area. At the back is Brad Hardy, just casually runs into the open goal, stabs it through and Hardy brings up his second goal. For Brisbane, the match had severe after-effects. Former Footscray skipper Jimmy Edmund was found guilty of striking Russell Morris with the elbow. He was suspended for a season high, six matches. Oh, and, uh, long kick to Hine, almost took the mark. No, said the umpire. In goes Hardy. Great play, Brad Hardy. Picks it up in the pack and slams it through his third goal. Real honest to goodness trier as Jeff Raines took the hand pass from Banfield, drives it forward. Hardy takes possession onto the left foot, goes towards goal. Nice little in kick from Hardy. It's four goals to Brad Hardy. Punched away by Reynoldson, but well taken by Curran, who swings the ball across. Gibson now is there, but Dunstall first on the scene, kicks it off the ground and brings up his sixth goal. That's how talented Hawthorne are, as we see Loveridge on the left foot. Oh, what a mark! A top mark! Uh, he's done the soccer trick, the Maradona or Pelé, and now he's taken court. Ah, oh, Platten. A tremendous play now. This will be a goal because Platten can run right down the ground. No one coming at him. And David O'Keefe isn't going to have a goal kicked against him. So Platten runs into the open goal. That's the easiest goal I've ever seen. And that muddy centre is going to get worse. Wet weather marred round 13 on both sides of the continent. In Perth it didn't seem to worry the fleet-footed Eagles. Mainwaring and Malaxos ran away from Fitzroy, the West Coast home by 72 points. Used his body beautifully, took them after the hand pass out to Mainwaring. Her book swings onto the left foot, goes towards goal. That's a lovely goal for this Mainwaring. Upside bottom goes up, opposed to Ashenko. It falls down to McNish. McNish drives towards full forward. Backing himself against the ball, Stevens, a chance behind for Lockyer, and Lockyer runs in an open goal and kicks his third. A loose ball coming out to O'Connell again, over the shoulder. Will it slide through from O'Connell? Is it a goal? Chance for Eppleston, pushed off the ball by Cameron. For the first time since 1985, the Bulldogs won six in a row. 
At home to Geelong, they withstood an opening three-goal barrage from Gary Ablett. Despite having his number taken, Doug Hawkins, the darling of the western suburbs, was best of field. He was the key player in the Bulldogs' 39-point win. Can he pick it up? It's shocking conditions, but he does it well. The little fella, round onto the left foot, up towards Beasley, stood his ground and takes the mark. Well, Stoneham fell over. Beasley stood up. It's been taken off him. Oh, rubbish. He's being reported. Beasley reported. Oh, good mark. He's had just one kick, Bruce Lindner, and then kicks maybe too long. Hawkins. And that's uh, easily the highest scoring game for the day. Comes to Royal off the pack. He goes long. This is a chance. Nobody back there. Oh, what a goal by Brian Royal. Oh, Hawker, the quick kick goes up to Denher playing in front. Oh, beautiful. Tunnel boarded out to the Billy Duckworth. And Duckworth goes bang. Skids along the ground and pops it through to his first goal. Reynoldson. Brisbane had no luck with the conditions. They managed only three goals on a forgettable day against Essendon. Now there's a mud wrestle on. That's the only what we could call it. Mark Williams comes in with a strong arm tactic. Thompson across to Hamilton. Hamilton straightens up. It's a wobbly kick, but in front is it a mark. Yes, it's Billy Duckworth. And uh, a Bears player, Copman, they'll pick him up in a moment. He caught one right in the mush, and that's what started the fight. As uh, far as Collingwood driven up to the edge of the square, chance for Taylor. Brian Taylor kicked all Collingwood's goals against North Melbourne. In fact, his two in the second quarter were the only ones the Magpies scored. North's runners were too classy in the conditions. Cracker and Larkin outstanding. The ruse by nine goals and the four points pushed them into the five. Passes immediately. Not unusual for Williams. Terry Tripp takes it. Goes Goldwood. At the back it's Morewood. Kappa's there also. Kappa runs the left foot. Snap! First goal of the game. Worry Kappa. It's Kappa against Crawley. Kappa up! Sydney kicked the sweep in much better conditions at the SCG on the Sunday, while the Swans had dropped 247 game veteran Mark Browning for the first time since 1975, they had winners everywhere against St Kilda. Lockett kicked three at one end, but the winner of the full forwards duel was Warwick Kappa. His six pushed him two ahead of the Burley Saint on the goal kicking table. Neagle takes it, the hand pass wide, Tui, a quick hand pass finds Gerard Healy and the Swans going forward as Healy, one bounce, steadies, drives it long, Kappa against Foley, over the top, a beautiful mark to Peter McConville who's played an excellent game. Have played probably better football than the Swans but haven't been able to put goals on the board as Cordy puts the ball forward. Michael Boone comes away with it, dummies beautifully, straightens up onto the left foot, goes towards goal as he brought up his first for the Swans, yes he has! He drives it forward, Kappa up, brings the ball down the ground, taps it on again, the loose ball put away by Quirk, Quirk snaps towards goal from the boundary line, it's swinging back, it's a magnificent goal! Peter Quirk! Oh, gee, let's have a look at that one in replay, 16, 10, play 7, 8. Every time the Swans kick a goal, Bobby, that drives you mad. When you're commentating, as we see the hand pass come to Greg Williams. Ah, oh, look at the way he did that. Onto the left foot goes Williams. That was brilliant play. I'll tell you what, he'll have to cover some territory. As a seven-goal final quarter gave Sydney the points over Collingwood under the SCG lights. 20,000 saw Merv Nagel kick five goals in a best of field performance. Into the open goal, goal to the next towards Holden, oh that's good disciplined play but unfortunately for him there's no one there, oh too high to tackle, oh stupid play Brett Yorgi, he's going to be reported, Atkins hooks it back, a chance and a good mark, a very good mark by Darren Mullane, oh he's off, yes, and he swings around very easily into the open goal on the left foot and Darren Mullane has slammed it through for a very easy goal in the finish. The hands of the pack, tapped on by Byrne, Picked up by Murphy from the 50 metre line. Murphy goes goal, but he doesn't miss many of these. Oh, great mark by Fraser Murphy. Up towards full forward. Bacchanara from behind, but Alvin in front. In a grand final rematch and a pointer of things to come, Hawthorne and Carlton produced one of the best matches of the season at VFL Park. 44,000 on hand for a thriller. Oh dear, dropped it. Oh dear me. But he recovers beautifully. Oh. Now what are you going to do? Two mistakes, one good thing. 
Dunstall and Brereton back to Dunstall. 30 metres out, smothered by Hunter. New goes the paddle. Through goes Murphy. Gets boot to ball. What a goal! Fraser Murphy! Brereton goes for his second goal and hasn't made it. And Mark right on the line by Madden. Here's a chance now for Paul Deere. Loveridge. Bacanara shoots. Four the... goals down at half time. The Hawks surged home. And Hawthorne for the first time in the match. It's in between wing and half forward. To the back. Green bowled over. No whistle. Tuck. Great play. There's the siren. And the Hawks have got up by a point. Jesson today. Duckworth. Footscray made it seven on end by defeating Essendon and virtually ending the Bombers' finals hopes. McGuinness and Hawkins outstanding. The crowd might get involved as well. Daisy Williams, certainly that's going to be the character of the game. It's going to be getting their body in front all day. Oh, top play. Drives it back whence it came. All Bombers here. Oh, who's the Rovers? Royal. Open goal off the carpet. No, picks it up, gets it. Not wrong. Little fellow. He's hard. Nowhere to go. Gets a shove in the back. In the first turn. They need to get a wriggle on. They're trailing by 5-1. Top goal, little black. Steaming down the outer wing go the dogs. Eppleston the target. Mark for Hawkins. Oh, and he's caught one for it too. Slightly off the side of the boot. Jess came across the back. Yes, a great effort by Jimmy Jess. And Rioli in front again. Rioli, a shocking kick. In fact, hit a pigeon that time. One of the players responsible for bringing the Eagles back. Barrage puts the ball long. Manton can't. Yeah, I think great effort by Manton. There's Wilson. There's the siren. No matter what the result of the kick, Richmond running out winners. It won't make the distance for it. <laughs> And Steve McCann has got it. Oh, good skills. McCann and Spargo with five goals apiece took care of Brisbane when the Roos travelled north. North Melbourne by 38 points. 30 yards back, tremendous play to his brother Jimmy. Jimmy from 35 metres out, races in and slams it through for a goal. The ball high in the air, punched away by Fairley, intercepted by Bernie Harris. The hand pass over the top to Richardson, straightens up. Can he give the hand pass on to Williams who taps it out to Beckett? Beckett straightens onto the left foot, puts it forward. Great goal, Bears! Drives it just slightly over the half back line. Up high was Crocker. Coming in, Ross Smith. Beautiful kick from Ross Smith. A glorious torpedo punt kick is full points. Taken away by Barrich and his teammate Zanotti. Zanotti with great pace. That's a free kick to Mark Zanotti. Held after he got rid of it. Oh. There's a fight. Salmon, uh, Madden I should say, and in comes Merritt, gee there's a couple of big blokes and it's on, it's really on now, have a look at this. There's a pot shot at the goals, this is close, yes, I think, oh it didn't bounce through, oh, and now it might be a goal. Ha, kicked it off the ground, he's put it through, and all the Essendon players aren't happy. Thompson looking down for Salmon. In one of the great individual performances of 1987, Paul Salmon kicked 11 goals in a personal tour de force against the West Coast Eagles in Perth. If the Bombers hadn't sewn the game up at half time, then a seven goal third quarter did the job. 10-8 to 16-18. Oh. oh, there's a big mark by Madden. A huge mark by Simon Madden. What's this in replay? A big leap. He might go the torpedo punt kick here. If he gets onto it, he could kick it. There's a high floater. It comes back. Oh, it's a mark. Yes, a good mark. And, I'll tell you, and he kicks it over his head, did he? Uh, he uh, took uh, a uh, chance there. Hand pass out wide looking for Williams. Moving in slow motion. Tackled by... Four. For the first time in six years, the Swans ventured to VFL Park for a day match against Footscray. It was like they hadn't been away. With Tony Morwood kicking six goals and dominating the second half, the Sydney boys won their 11th game of the season by 33 points. And two he oh. the mark. Play on, says the umpire. McGuinness out to Petraglia. Petraglia shoots for goal and puts it through. The Swans fighting each other for the ball, but Williams gets it out to Holden. Diving mark by Tony Morwood, and he's going to get it. Tap out by Quirk to Carter. 
Well, he's about 100 metres out of position. And following up, he's still going. Well, he missed that hand pass. That's a bit unlucky. Goes to Tui, and one of the other defenders goes for goal. And Tui has kicked it. From right to left. St Kilda gathered its only Premiership team together prior to the match against Fitzroy and what a reunion it turned out to be. St Kilda had won only three matches for 87. Fitzroy went to Moorabbin, hot favourites having won six. Holds it in. And they're all throwing their weight in and other things as well. And, uh, well I don't have to say too much about that. Owen oh, reported. Oh, all alone in the middle. And the long kick into the pocket. Can Grant get there? He can't! Winmar blows by himself. Lockett can give it back to Lowe. He did. Lovely stake. Oh, a class piece of footing. The members' side of the ground. Fellows, a good mark, not paid, but uh, ricochets off Matt and back to him. Fellows, a beautiful deliverer of the football. Chance for Taylor. No mistake. Bounces back over the two pursuers. Comes loose to Matt Ryan. Sure. Cloak has three metres on Dorotech. Oh, feeds it on very quickly to Terry Keyes. Runs to an in 40. Yes, he's split them. Trouble towards the wing. Blackwell flies when he shouldn't have, perhaps. Mullane crashes his way through. Handball out wide. York is a chance for the Pies. Gets past Kennedy easily at centre-half forward. Thumps the left footer towards goal and puts it through. Oja. Oh, comes off the head of uh, Morwood, Gleeson, Alvin running through, 25 metres out, sticks it through. Alvin's a half back. Robert Walls, the shore, off to Mullane. Filkey can draw the man, now goes himself outside 50. Taylor, goal. Number three for BT. Doritic can't mark, Mullane. He's a great player, Darren Mullane. Keeps his feet well, looking for someone to give it to in a better position. This time it's Filky. 45 metres out goes bang. And it's close. It's another goal to Collingwood. 21 points the difference. Three-quarter time with 18. 17 to Johnston. 14 to Glasgow. 12 to Kernahan. Ball at half forward for the Blues. Naley off to Murphy. Murphy's kicked to the front of the square. Melbourne's a chance and takes the mark. Knocks it away from Yorgi, back in Dennis. Good tap from Atkins down to Key. No one enjoys the big time more than Carlton's Premiership star Wayne Johnston. And when he was recalled for the match against those bitterest of rivals, Collingwood, he revelled. In a best on ground performance, he kicked a couple of goals, gave away plenty, and helped the Blues to their 12th win of the season. This time by four goals over the dreaded Magpies. And Jono throws the hand skyward as he lays on the ground. And here's a chance for Dean Turner with a high floating drop punt. The VFL experimented with a three-week split round encompassing rounds 16 and 17 in mid-July. But not even the league was prepared for the fireworks when Carlton visited Perth for a match against the Eagles. Four Carlton players, including Steve Kernahan, the much-reported David Rhys-Jones, Brad Shine and Shane Robertson, had their numbers taken, along with the lone eagle, Phil Narkel. None were suspended, although the saga of David Rhys-Jones continued when he was fined $5,000. Oh, gee, Miles read that beautifully and took a good mark in the back pocket. For Dean Turner, Rhys-Jones is here also. That was brilliant play by David Rhys-Jones, oh. and he pops one high around the head, and I don't think the umpire's going to report him, surely. Too far out to score. He sends it long down towards full forward, and from the side, Miles off hands. Goal to Kernahan, was it? Yes, it was! Robinson hooks it around and finds Meldrum. The match was a highlight of the season. The West Coast kicked away with seven goals early. Carlton had hit the lead by three-quarter time. The last term was a beauty, with Rhys Jones kicking his fifth to give the Blues the lead. Rewarding a good tackle, because he was caught, but there's the big mark. He's played a fine game. He was blitzed in the first quarter by Glenn Ginning, but since then Hunter's played pretty well and he's taking those big marks. Pios was put down by David Reese jones behind the play. Up they go, Fraser Murphy, over to Robertson, who's just been reported. It's grabbed by Naley. Naley a high one, here's two on one, but Madden's the tall man. And oh, Gleeson roving brilliantly into the open goal goes Adrian Gleeson, and he has put it through. Wing, 
Fisted away by Dorotich with good effect. It comes to Murphy. Murphy runs away from the wing and goes down towards the pocket. Reese Jones is down there. Almost a clever mark. Reese Jones leads back in the race. What about the hand pass? And he's kicked the goal. Reese Jones on report. Mackenzie, 50 metres out. Miles ducks back. Jeffrey Miles can't take the mark. Reese Jones. It would be the veteran, the Brownlow medalist, the Eagle skipper Ross Glendinning who would settle his side and ultimately kick the goal that sealed the game by three points to topple the ladder leaders. the West Coast Eagles. Crash down goes Morris. Well, Cronin had to do it. After winning seven games on the trot, the Bulldogs made it loss number two in a row when Hawthorne slaughtered them on July 11. The Big Dipper was best afield, but Russell Morris kicked six goals in a match-winning performance. The final margin, 97 points. He came from metres behind that marking contest to fly over the top of them and drag down the, match, the mark of the first quarter. Sensational. Up the ground, but not great distance. Marked by Sentiment Schwab. Onto uh, Dippier Domenico. Onto Green. Onto Morris. And he kicks the goal. What a display by the Hawks. And still about 15 minutes with the win for the Hawks. Paul Salmon took his tally to 20 goals in two rounds when he demolished Richmond. His nine this day helped the Bombers to a 54-point win and gave them a slender hope of September action. Oh, oh you won't beat that one today. Hart ran into a bit of ball there. Thompson ran into double trouble. Really had nowhere to go and the Tigers put a, a big tackle on him. It's, it's, this it's is a, starting to look like election day 1974. <laughs> because he's put them in pain free kicks for holding the ball. Well, and, and Roger and uh, Jim are not happy with each other. 13. John again. That Manton loves having a dip, doesn't he? Uh, not Manton, sorry. Uh, well, he's bowed. Bow, I don't uh, know. It's a long kick down to Salmon. He's a long way from goal. And he's played it again. Well, he did have two bites in it. Maybe it was knocked away from him on the third attempt. And now he's going to kick a 50-metre stick. He slipped as he kicked it. And it may kick the goal after all. It did. Well, I don't think Salmon can believe that. Can't quite take the mark. It's through to Bernie Harris. Fumbled the first time. He covers now. Breaks the tackle. Straightens up. Goes towards goal. Goal bursts it from Bernie Harris. And also in the goals was big Tony Lockett, the most talked about forward in the game was having one hell of a season. His eight goals flattened Brisbane and moved him to 76 on the goal kickers list. Well ahead of Kappa on 68, Dunstall on 61. It's called play on, Evans comes out, snaps towards goal, lovely snap from Evans, full points. Hoping there for Micken, couldn't quite take the mark, Rain swoops on the ball. Steadies from 55 metres out, now towards the 50 metre line. Reigns goes goalward, lovely kick, all points to Jeff Reigns. It's all bears, Richardson gives the ball on now to Bernie Harris. Gets past the first tackle, straightens up and goes goalward. Four goals, Bernie Harris. But not, not grabbing it, but uh, starting to take a few marks now. Lock. This fella here, Tony Lock. Now he straightens, comes across towards centre half forward. Philip Walsh is in the way, can't take the mark. Evans comes through. The hand pass from Evans on to Rice. Rice now walks around, straightens up and goes goalward. Two for full points. Russell, the hand pass back to Hocking. Standing start from 40, won't make it. Brownless again. The big guns from Geelong came out blazing at the MCG. Cameron kicked eight. Across his body for goal. Ablett kicked six and Billy Brownless added five. Geelong by 97 points against North Melbourne, the fourth best team in the league if the latter meant anything. Up towards half forward flank. Gary Cameron behind Demetrio this time. Well shepherded off by Law and he hasn't got up since either. And the kick out wide to Steele, who marks just inside the line. Long to Brownless. What a mark! Umpire not 
quite, didn't pay it. Ray Card gets his first touch. Over to Brownless. And Brownless, well shepherded, goes in and goals. Attempted tap on by David Cameron. Stoneham gets it up the ground to Ray Card. Oh, Cameron. What a goal. Off the hands of Purser. McKenzie got a boot to it. Weekend two of this split round saw some of the most uneven results of the season. Carlton won one of the nail biters by a measly 55 points. Kernahan and Gleeson each kicking four against the Bulldogs, who'd lost three in a row. As he launched himself from behind the pack, five marks in a magical first turn. Bradley to Naley. Silvani. What lifeless. Uh, is a big... Doesn't go the 10 metres, play on the call. Kennedy knocks it away. Could be a free kick to the Bulldogs. Yes, in the back against Doritich. And he really ploughed in there, Doritich. Beautiful torpedo. Straight through the middle. Still in control. Has to beat three of them. Belgium gets it. Wicks his teeth. Tunnel ball out the back quickly. Gleason or was On the Glasgow. Time to steady him. And got It's hit a seagull and killed it. Oh. Stone dead. Long kick towards Kernahan. Dennis! Oh, yes! It's been paid! Dennis up over the skipper. Support. Wilson, and right, I should say, gives it back to Bayes. He goes forward. That's a great goal, Mark Bayes. Sydney refused to lie down. While the match against the West Coast Eagles was touted as a major test, Hafey's boys treated the visitors to Sydney on the Sunday with disdain. Stevie Wright kicked eight goals. Warwick Kappa kicked eight goals. And the Swans, with 30 goals, 21, 201, routed the Eagles by 130 points. While the Eagles were stunned, it would be the beginning of a magic run for the one-time South Melbourne. So he puts it for four goals and they're playing brilliant football, the Sydney Swans. Off he goes with a long kick. Capper again and Morwood together. Morwood! Taken by Murphy. Murphy, a chance of a goal. He likes this sort of shot as it's shepherded through. David Murphy brings up his second goal. Forward and full forward. Melbourne was a long shot to make the finals, but one man who was desperate to be where he'd never been before in September was skipper Robbie Flower. Against Geelong, on the third weekend of this unusual split round, he gave a virtuoso performance. His four goals against Geelong was best of field stuff. It kicks to the advantage of the Cats, and the big skipper takes the mark. Brownless kicks a goal. Oh, gee whiz, Burke would have been a bit crook on that, I think, if he'd have missed. Tenth kick coming up for Buse. Kicks towards the wing area. Ablett can't mark. <laughs> towards full forward. Brownless tries the specky. Ablett, can you stay on your feet? Kick it off the ground, he does, and puts it through from behind. As a sad sight for Geelong fans, Gary Ablett, helped by two trainers, goes off the ground to be replaced by Burke. McPherson. Uh, McPherson, yes. Yeah. Right, no. McPherson, away they go. Another Tasmanian gale took them. The smallest crowd of the year, just over 5,000, saw the Lions kick only 17 goals from 46 scoring shots to sink the Brisbane Bears. Ruse with a staggering 19 marks was the star for the Lions. As Pekin gets it forward. Oh, big mark taken by Ruse. Split the pack. Hasn't quite got the distance. Ruse is there, yes! He's capped it off, didn't bother going back. They gained nothing out of that little exchange. Ruse! Big chest mark. He might have popped a good one. Back to Sydney, back to the record books. And on the receiving end this day was Essendon. Premiers in 84 and 85, the Bombers were literally flattened by a Sydney side that was intent on destruction. In an afternoon that saw 47 goals kicked, Sydney kicked 36 of them. In the second highest score in league history, the Swans 36-20, 236. They defeated Essendon by 163 points. They became the first side in league history to top 200 points in successive matches. They recorded their highest score ever, and with the finals in mind, scored their sixth win on the run.
12 players were goal kickers. Kappa the best with six. Oh, good play, Merritt. Might have been held then, but Steve Wright's got it. Into the open goal, and it's another one of the Swans, and they're looking good. Beautiful play, but here they come. Paul Hawk, the base, base into the open goal. He stepped in. It's another one to the Swans. I tried Walsh at full back against Kappa before I would have moved my key forward. As the ball comes to Neagle, Neagle goes up to Kappa. Rioli swings it back to the 25 metre line, off hands a chance for Wilson. The Big V flexed its muscles in the second of the State of Origin matches. This time Victoria went to Perth, keen to avenge its narrow loss to South Australia. Star of the match was centre man Greg Williams. Team statisticians credited him with a staggering 48 possessions, including 27 hand passes. It was enough to earn him the Witten medal. Salmon with five up forward gave the Vicks a focal point and with Madden controlling the rucks, Healy and Williams forcing the ball out of the centre, Victoria was rarely troubled. The slippery conditions now, he kicks it straight off the ground, well smothered off the boot of Hardy, picked up by Waitman, oh beautiful ball, a hand pass over the top, it's taken down by Royal on the ground, Royal goes towards goal, lovely kick from Royal, brings up his first goal. Now has a chance to drive the ball long towards centre wing, Doranich and Morris, Doranich in the front position, he's paid the mark. He the mark, he's going to be a free kick. Oops. They're getting back in number. Healy driving at grandstand oh, side. Superb mark. mark by Rhys Jones. Right over the top of Billy Duckworth. There's Craig Holden for Western Australia. He plays on quickly. He's had a good match, Holden. Good vision too as he comes across looking for Wilson. Strong mark on his chest and he's away. Sends play towards half forward in from the side. Mitchell, almost the mark taken down there by Royal. A battle after it. The hand pass comes out. Western Australia with a chance now. Great hand pass from Bearstone to oh, Mitchell. And the man who started at Rance. Rance gets the hand pass over the top. Turning around to Shanko. In he comes. And what's he done with this one? Slap down, goal, Rhys Jones off the ground. Gets it across to Healy, he'll go looking for Morris, no it's wide of the mark, Loveridge couldn't take it, chance behind for Morris, scrambles a kick towards goal and I think he may have kicked it, he has. Brennan, a nice kick towards half forward, a lovely mark taken that time, coming across the front by Paul Ruth. Fighting hard as Malaxis gets it out of the middle, they're breaking down up forward, this is Cracker. Back to Malaxis. What can they establish this time? The short one is on to Bairstow. Now Bairstow hasn't had a good day. 30 metres out, Mark Bairstow. That's better. Puts them all out wide to right. Back to Sydney, and for the third week in a row, Sydney kicked 30 goals. It was very ho-hum for the glamour team in the league, and some smart money was already suggesting the Swans would be online to win their first flag since the Foreign Legion did it back in 1934. On the receiving end this time was Richmond, the wooden spoon favourites, currently occupying the VFL cellar. A lovely mark to Jimmy Jess. Now that was an excellent mark. Good kick by Watson, covers 60 metres to full forward. It's at the back, chance there for the Bombers. Here's a goal to Hawker. Williams into the breeze from that side. It holds up, Madden again. And the mark paid. Walsh might have taken a free. Reese Jones, great. To Johnston. And the Dominator puts the Blues in front. Because uh, they haven't fired up at all, Carlton. They really need to get going this quarter and uh, have a bit of a buffer against us in the last. Oh, what a shocking mistake by Terry Danaher. Watson on the ground. Short kick into the pocket. Salmon. Takes the mark. A chip pass, a little high. But Great mark taken by Merritt. Ball number 45, which is uh, Green from Wesley. He's second now. He goes straight down Ooh. and dribbles it down. Oh, it was meant for it. The cracker gives it across to his brother, Phil. The man running through. Got to use a German. So it's McRae again. The breeze too strong. Lockett, good chasing though. Keeps it low. Oh, what a pass to Gotch. And, and uh, we've got a fire. 
Oh, in the stand, yeah. that's right behind the St Kilda goal. No one standing the mark, drives it deep into the forward line, big pack at the fall of the ball, Lester Smith is up, off hands a chance behind for Lewis. It's not in Perth him. on Sunday, Hawthorne led by two goals at the last change in front of more than 25,000 raucous Perth fans. Kick it off the ground, Tuck, in towards the open goal, Michael Tuck goes up towards goal and brings up the Hawks' first goal. Lovridge gets the hand pass out to Di Pietrominico, back to Lovridge. Lovridge goes long down towards the goals, Dunn still at the back, couldn't quite take the mark, kicks it off the ground though, an excellent goal by Jason Dunstall. Castor coming out wide, Barrich, a clever mark taken behind, he goes long and that's a wonderful kick by Adrian Barrich. And Waring's high kick comes towards half forward, airs in from the side, knocks it down, taken by Russo, and once more this defensive Hawthorne stands, stands tall, and speaking of doing that, a magnificent mark taken by Morris. Lockyer with the hand pass with a tap. No clear tap there. Malaxos accepts the hand pass. They give it forward to Warsfold, who goes long. Jenky was up high, couldn't take them up. Picked up by Glenn Denning. Four points between the sides. Michael Tuck puts the ball long. Dunstall on his own. Zanotti coming back. Great effort by Zanotti to punch the ball away. But it's picked up by Green. Double the Lord's goal. Oh. Four points. McEnough puts it straight to the arms of Keane. Beautiful kick, it's a long one. No mark, it comes back, it's a goal! Oh. Well, that is fitting. Tuck takes it, gets the kick towards half forward. Di Pietromini goes at the back, can't take it. Coming through is Platten. Platten towards goal! And the Hawks are back in front! It is strange how fortunes fluctuate. After defeating the reigning Premiers, the Eagles were at home less than a week later to North Melbourne, a side they should by all rights have beaten. It wasn't to be. Despite being ten goals down at three-quarter time, the Eagles rallied and kicked 8-7 in a frenzied final term to come within 11 points. Kernahan plays on quickly to half forward. Oh, strong mark by Sartori. He plays Sydney's on... golden run came to an end in front of a packed house at Prince's Park. 32,000 saw the league leaders severely dent the pride of the Swans to the tune of 68 points. After topping 30 goals, three matches in a row, this time the best the Glamour boys from the Harbour City could manage was eight. Bang, straight up the ground, that's the way to go. Kappa! Between wing and half forward, Neagle comes in, kicks a long drop punt towards half forward, floating across the front of the pack. A great mark taken by Justin Madden. Oh, a little bit of aggression. Of course, it was silly play by Justin Madden. Neagle, a little late on the scene. Naley plays on, kicks it high. Down by Neagle. Oh, great mark by, Sark, uh, by Madden. Glasgow shrugs the tackle, back onto the right foot, kicks up towards full forward. Brilliant roving by Gleeson. Goal coming up for the Blues. Preston gets it. Fair Geelong was hanging on to fifth place. A 27-point win over Essendon was vitally needed. Took just too low. Here's Turner, who's been killing his heels half, 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 half back somewhere. He looks to have been pulled down after he's got rid of it. Cameron, out for drum. Back to David Cameron. 60 metres out. He's charging all the way for them. 40 out now. Oh, Ty just missed. No, it is there. It is a goal. High kick from uh, Walsh. They're all going with the flight of it. Watson, not paid. Stadium's got a free. Held when he didn't have it. Hughes. Won't make the distance. Mark for Vandahar, a beauty in the heavy rain. It's led. There's the pass on the way. And look at has marked. Well, as a century goal kicker, Pete, Call this 100th goal in league football of Tony Lockett's if he kicks it. Well, Tony Lockett coming in for goal number 100. He'll never forget. It's a goal! A great effort by the young champ. A beautiful kick. And there are the Saints players protecting Tony Lockett. And the crowd are coming on in their hundreds and thousands.
He's only 20 metres out. No angle to speak of. He's kicked seven, he's kicked 100. And if he can kick this, he'll equal Bill Moore's record of 101 goals for St Kilda. And Lockett has done that. He's put through goal number eight. Dunstall there for the Hawks. Platten back to Dunstall. Dunstall's right foot snap is a beauty. The last time the Swans won at Prince's Park against any tenant was back in 1965. When they arrived for a round 20 encounter with Hawthorne, their hopes were slim to say the least. After leading at half time, they simply succumbed. Brereton cut them to ribbons with 22 kicks and 15 marks. His four goals just added to a 45 point humiliation. What's the wing? Kappa, now Thrip, comes through, Bays it is, Bays left kick foot kick. Is a goal! Oh. One, up towards full forward, Kappa at the back. The mark's been taken in front by Tony Morwood. The centre half forward, Brereton, pushed off the ball, but he takes the mark. It's been paid. Play on now, says umpire Clayton. Burton round on the left foot, bounces, could be caught. Loveridge backed him up well and puts it through again for another brilliant goal to Hawthorne. Against Kernahan. Kernahan's marked it. Steve Kernahan kicked eight against Geelong and Carlton, the league leaders, was looking to go that one step better than in 86. Geelong looked second rate. Beautiful, mate. Oh, he's sensational, this fellow. One. Not quite the legs, but Kernahan's marked and gold. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> How did I lose the jumper, huh? Mad. Another fiddly tap by yeah. Madden. Well, he put Kennedy under pressure. He's got the free, though. He waits for it to bounce. Can he beat Robertson with the ball? No, oh, he can't. Robertson with Curry. Well, they're watching it from everywhere at Cadenia Park. Tory front position. Knocked away by Stone. And the roving from Hunter. And he's got his second. Paddling for Platten. Goal coming up, 20 metres out. Very high. Now's a chance for... Half the Hawthorne team were in the goals when old rivals Essendon were swamped at VFL Park in what should have been one of the matches of the round. Instead, the Hawks trounced the old grand final rivals by 50 points. Goal square job. Platten stays at the back, but it won't reach him. Oh, great roving. Over his shoulder. Beauty. Hawker at the back, he's got Mark Thompson in support, he gets around the Hawthorne defence, goes goalwards. Hamilton, poor old kick, hard for Hurd, off to Merritt. Brereton, what a tackle! What a tackle by Dermot Brereton! He burst the ball out of his hands, Platten finds Dunstall, open goal, great football Hawthorne, Dunstall all the way, started by Brereton. Corey. Oh, good play, Perth. A lost ball. Good play, Satori. Backed up by Naley. Naley chips beautifully. Clever stuff. In the quarter. Taken well. And ball comes out to Hinckley. Snaps truly. And he's put the Roys in front. Crowd call for a push in the back. Here's Ken Hunter. 40 metres out. Oh, top goal. And the Blues out of trouble, or are they? Here's Ruse again. Top goal! Here's Rees. Gets it out to Hinkley. Good play. Good jumping of the ball by Hinkley. Left foot shot. Goal! His third. Curry. Not this time. Curry all over his back. Giovanni comes in to try and take it. Good play there by Satari. Silvani runs well. Up to Williams. A goal. He's not going to get a kick though. Rees Jones sees to that. Oh, magic! Robertson can go for home. Robertson kicks it, put it down to David Rhys Jones. Dipper picks it up. He's in one of the greatest home and away rounds in modern football, the 1987 season ended in triumph and disappointment. Melbourne, Footscray, and Geelong all harboured hopes of playing in the finals. One spot remained for grabs. Tender shot for goal, couch, dangerous, boundary line close, now he's got it, screws it round for a goal, and he's put it through, has he? That's incredible! Incredible! They certainly got the runners, this time it's Bacanara, he bursts into open territory, he's running towards a 50 metre mark, this will be a great goal if he kicks it. 
Kept it with a long kick down towards Leicester Smith. Over the top of the pack. Dunstall. Hawthorne's Jason Dunstall kicked a goal, 90 seconds from the siren, to rob Geelong of victory. The margin at Cardinia Park, three points. The ball goes to full forward for Melbourne. Kennedy, a stray handball. Lyon, left foot shot for goal, is the first score of the match. And then at the Western Oval, the drama unfolded. For the first time in 23 years, Melbourne was on the verge of the finals, and nothing it seemed would stand in the Demons' way. Gary Lyon. Flank, Peter Baxter, good hand pass over the top, and a beautiful kick by Foster. Magnificent! The time, here's Greg Healy. Out to stretch, from near the boundary line, what a kick! Goes for goal, off line, Mark for Footscray, right in the goal square to Foster will kick Footscray's seventh goal. Steve McPherson from 45 metres. He's made it. Good kick, Foster. Beasley in the square. Couldn't possibly miss. Flower there as well. Flower gets a goal down at the last change. Melbourne under John Northey steamed home. On to Bailey. Kick it yourself. On to Flower. Flower, goal number two coming up. There it is, the Demons back in it. Bounces, the bounce favours him. Second bounce, Spalding gaining ground. He gets the handball away, down goes Williams. Spalding. And he could have reported. To full forward. Chance for Jackson. Snapshot for goal, it's good. On line, Melbourne in front. And while all this was happening, no one seemed to notice Sydney win its first game at Prince's Park in 22 years. An eight-point win over Fitzroy left the Swans with 15 wins and Warwick Kappa on 99 goals. If we'd waited all season to see how much Sydney had improved on their fourth placing in 1986, Hawthorne set the record straight most emphatically in the qualifying final at Waverley. And if there was one high point for the Sydney Siders, it came from Warwick Kappa. Is that goal number 100? It is. His 100th goal of the season was the first by a bloke from Sydney in the big time. One out jewel. Oh, taps it away beautifully. The swab did Michael Tuck. That was brilliant play. I'm sure that in front of the lowest finals crowd at a finals match in years, Hawthorne gave the Swans a football lesson. Taps it up. It's picked up by Morwood. Across to Kappa. Kappa a step towards goal. 101 goals. No, Browning was there. Dunstall, a very unselfish player. Oh, Peter Russo, brilliantly done. He picks it up. He fires it. Goal. Great goal, Russo. Beautiful hand pass to Russo. Russo to Bacanara. Into the open goal. Bang. And I think that's another one to the hawk. Tucks there. The next day, the lesson was even more extreme. The elimination final was just that. North Melbourne scored only 40 points for the afternoon in a harrowing display. Melbourne scored 158, the highest in an elimination final to North's lowest. Paul Hawke and the umpire said it was an illegal tackle on Hawke. With the top, Dunstall taps it out to Tuck. Tuck hooks towards goal. It's a lovely looking kick. It's a great goal. Now, Kappa, a big chance here on Langford. Oh, dear. Oh, what a mark. Oh. Long hand pass towards Morris over the top. It'll go to Dunstall. Dunstall into the open goals. It's a goal. Karen elects to go long towards half forward. Barrett a beautiful mark. Well, that's bad news for the Swans, and that would possibly be a hamstring, I would think. Well, the Hawks have really have a lot of skill. Here's danger because Peter Russo's only 30 metres out. He lines up and fires, and that's another one. Punched away from Byrne by Langford. Gerard Healy takes it. Kicks towards goal. It's swinging back. Let make the distance. It's a touch. No, it's a goal. Well, oh, that was a lovely goal by Gerard Healy. It comes to Morris. Morris, a beautiful hand pass to Brereton. Brereton's got an open goal. He fires. Yes, great goal. Carter and Brereton. Umpire Daw coming across to have a few words. I think Dermy's... It's Carlton Hawthorne. This one won't make the distance. Curran flies. Mark. Oh, brilliant. Oh, not paid. Colour. Carroll's at full back. It's Brereton hand passes back towards Bacanara. Hooked over the shoulder. 
A beautiful goal, Buckner! Huge crowd here. In 15 meetings, Carlton had beaten Hawthorne twice. In 1987, they'd lost both encounters. Yet in the second semi-final, the Blues looked wonderful. Hunter! Driven straight up the ground, but he's kicked off. Gary Ayres looked as though he was completely set to take the mark, and Hunter pulled it from the clouds. While early kicking was astray, two goals from 13 shots in the first half, the Blues couldn't be written off. Brereton was well held, Dunstall held at two goals, and the Carlton running players invincible. Shots to nil. Justin Madden taking a lovely mark, caught one a little bit high, and... Towards half forward, Dippier Domenico. Oh, what a mark! Oh, what a brilliant mark by the Brownlow medalist. Dunstall. Dunstall balks. Thinks about the hand pass. Now hooks the ball over the shoulder towards the forward area. Kennedy punches the ball away. Brereton's there. Two players go to the ground. Cool play on as Platten picks it up. Snaps towards goal. Dunstall in front. Tremendous use of the body. Is a chance for Kennedy. A hand pass to Brereton. Now, is that a goal? I think it is. And a half forward. Satori couldn't take it. Hunter comes through a beautiful blind turn. A nice hand pass to Evans, who goes goalwards. Evans' kick bounces in the square, runs the right way. It's a great goal. Well, well, and give away a free a goal of the opposition. Oh, well, that's it. I wouldn't have Wayne Johnson mind. snaps towards goal. It's hooking back, and the goal umpire indicates it's an excellent goal. Well trapped by Dunstall. Dunstall 60 metres out from goal. Went with a short one, but it was beautifully smothered that time. That was brilliant defence again. Dunstall just hobbling off the ground. Bradley was sliding in there. Was it a free kick to Burton or not? A fantastic finals player, Gary Ayres. There's Naley, who's been a great player. He's gold, has he? Oh, what a great attempt. Point of the centre of the square. Bradley looks for Kernahan, and he takes a lovely mark. Kernahan, as I've said right throughout the game, the key to the Carlton side. If he takes over, I feel that Carlton can win this game. Kernahan right in front for goal number two. He kicks, and he has goal. Bradley and the ball goes long towards the forward line. Kernahan! This will put the pressure on the Hawks if he kicks this, because they'll be seven points in front. Steve Kernahan from... Despite trailing by nine points at three-quarter time, the Blues got up and provided the biggest upset of the season. The beaten grand finalists of 1986 had turned the tables. In warm temperatures, things became pretty hot in the first quarter as the Demons strived for their ninth win in a row. Kicking with the breeze, Melbourne struggled until a free kick to Ricky Jackson put them in front. But shortly afterwards, Peter Curran broke through the tight Melbourne defence to bring up the Hawks' first goal, and their only one for the opening quarter. Bad defence by Hawthorne, then let Todd Viney's free kick sail through for another major, and the Demons held a narrow five-point lead at the first change. Even the wind seemed to change early in the second quarter. Rod Grinter, here with brilliant play, steals it from Gary Ayres, and his goal puts Melbourne further in front. A quick reply by Gary Bacanara was about the only highlight for the Hawks in the second term, as his long goal still left them 12 points in arrears. Then Robbie Flower was shirt-fronted by Dipper and was shortly afterwards forced to leave the field. Dipper also went to the dugout. Quick goals then by Dean and Brian Wilson saw Demon fans go wild as Melbourne led at the major change by 22 points. In the third term, the Melbourne small men led their opponents a merry dance. Ricky Jackson brought up his third goal to increase the Demon's lead to 28 points. Hawthorne, however, still fought back. A much-needed goal by Ray Jenke kept them in the hunt by reducing the deficit to 22. Then, when Gary Bacanara was paid a free after Sean White was penalised for throwing, the Hawks briefly looked a chance. Bacanara put it straight through for a much-needed goal. When Chris Mew was KO'd by Grinter late in the third term and carried off, things looked black for the Brown and Golds, but again they came back. Goals by Kennedy and Morris, and the difference was only nine points. Oh, it's coming back now. Then it was dear to Bacanara at the 27-minute mark of the term and suddenly Melbourne's hold on the match was tenuous. The Demons then scored a behind and right on the siren, Gary Bacanara was given a free kick on the 50-metre mark. A 15-metre penalty and he lined up the shot. If he kicks this goal, Hawthorne are in the 1987 grand final. If he misses, Melbourne are in. There's the kick. It's a goal. It's a goal. Hawthorne have won. And so it was the Hawks by two points, winning through to their fifth successive grand final. Melbourne players and supporters just couldn't believe it.
St Kilda versus Footscray. St Kilda, A Lockett, one vote. Grand final week is traditionally started with the counting of votes in the Brownlow medal. Tradition though took a detour. For the second time in two years the honours were shared. It would be the burly young St Kilda forward Tony Lockett who had the outright lead. He was overtaken by Hawthorne's John Platten, while Carlton's Paul Meldrum was in contention too with five best of field votes. By the time the votes for round 21 were announced, the pair were deadlocked. They wouldn't be separated. Platten, the 6-4 to four favourite, the little fellow with the tiny Tim looks, and Big Plugger, the first full forward to win the medal, were standing side by side on the dais. Ladies and gentlemen, we have dual Brownlow medal winners. For the second year running... And Tony Lockett, joint winners. Awkward bounce, Di Pietromenico crashes his way through and again, down he goes. 92,000 were at the Melbourne Cricket Ground for the last Saturday in September. Hawthorne and Carlton, the two teams that had played off for the flag in 86. The two teams that had finished 1-2 on the ladder in 87. Once a second time, he carries the ball deep into the pocket. Just away, Schwab, caught, just gets in the hand pass. Grabbed by Johnston, Johnston from 40 metres, fires a goal. Brilliant play by the centreman. A forward good kick two into the path of Kennedy. He's inside 50 now, John Kennedy. Pulls it down a woods, full forward, gives the bunny, touch it. He claims he did. No, he didn't. Jones, he slipped over. Brereton's got a chance. Oh, they crash into him. Johnston was first to arrive, and then a great tackle was applied. Play on. It's still in play as... Uh, oh, there's Copsman. Can never write them off. As here comes Michael Tucker. He won't give up. He's flattened after he kicked him for Kenny Hunter. He's got it. A lovely hand pass from Hunter to Bradley. This is a goal coming up. Goal. As he was out of position to take the mark, it's bumped in the opposite pocket by Ayers. Doritich, about 15 metres out, kicks a goal. Beautiful play. Morris has done his knee again. There's Kernahan. Can he grab it? The Carlton captain picks it up. Goals! Path of Hunter. Couldn't quite get there. It beat him by half a stride. Down he goes. Behind it's knocked away by Aitken. In goes Tuck. Tuck's over the ball. Clever hand pass. In the square. Kennedy goal. Now Bradley. And young Pritchard, Bradley, knocks it on, great pace, Bradley, he straightens up, he fires, it comes back, and he goal. Beautiful play, Dorotic. Oh, gee, the bounce to Melton, this is a goal, yes! Robertson scrambles a kick to Bradley, Bradley feigns the hand pass, stabs Goldwood, puts it through. That high, the pressure now on the Hawks, the big fist is away, here's a goal coming up to the Blues, into the open goal goes Gleeson, and it's a goal. He's done all day. Put it out to Dean. On the overlap, the man who could be contending for the Norm Smith medal. That's Rhys Jones. Through he comes. Kicks it long towards half forward. Meldrum is down there. Knocked away, but again, no ground support. Naley just runs away from three Hawthorne players. He's going goal with Mark Naley. He's put it through. Half forward. Here they come again, the Blues. Kernahan now gets into the action. He kicks a goal. Is it another one? Yes. Goal. Hot at the moment, they can do no wrong. 